Howdy. This video is on the ion dipole and ion ion interactions. The ion dipole interaction is why ionic solids dissolve in water. Whenever you dissolve something in something else, you have to replace the intermolecular forces of the pure stuff with the intermolecular forces of the solution. And so the only reason ionic solids dissolve in water is because there's a strong ion dipole interaction between the ion and the dipole moment of the water molecule. Remember, the stronger the attraction, the more stable. The ion-ion interaction is why the ionic solids form. Again, it's the interaction between positive ions and negative ions. The stronger the attraction, the lower the energy, the more stable. So the ion-ion is why ionic solids form. Now, after watching this video, you should be able to describe what the ion-dipole interaction is, give examples of it, and explain why those examples are important. You should also be able to do the same thing for the ion-ion interaction. Describe what it is, identify when it occurs, and give examples of why it's important. And so the ion-dipole interaction, remember when you see dipole, remember polar molecules. And so ion-dipole is just the interaction between the ion and a polar molecule. And so the most common example is when you dissolve an ionic solid in water. Water is very polar, and so there's a strong ion-dipole interaction between the water molecule and the ion. And so water, you have a partial negative charge in the oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative. You have a partial positive charge in the hydrogen. And so the positive ions are going to be attracted to the oxygen side of the water molecule, and the negative ions would be attracted to the hydrogen side. The stronger the attraction, the lower the energy, the more stable. But water is highly polar. And so here we have, I think, potassium permanganate. And so the potassium is going to be attracted to the negative oxygen side of the water molecule. That strong attraction is going to cause the potassium permanganate to actually dissolve. Water molecules are made of hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen side of the molecule has a positive charge. The oxygen side is negative. When water molecules contact an ionic compound, such as potassium permanganate, their positive sides are attracted to the negative ions of the compound, and the negative sides of the H2O are attracted to the positive ions in the compound. These attractions allow the crystal lattice to break down, and the compound dissolves. And so again, this enables water to actually dissolve ionic solids. That's kind of interaction. interesting. We can actually look at the ion-dipole interaction. Now, I apologize. I shouldn't have a bond being formed there. Um, it's just because of distances in the software, but there really is not a chemical bond between the sodium and the water. And so on the left, you have the sodium ion and then the water molecule, and here you have energy. And so you notice that <coughs> as the sodium ion and the water molecule get closer, you get stronger attraction, stronger attraction. Eventually you do get some repulsion, but it's attraction that leads to lower energy, more stable configuration. Now, if we look at it, and define when they're infinitely far apart as being zero energy, then we see an attraction of force at the, at the minimum of about uh, minus 120 kilojoules per mole. And so the strength of the ion dipole interaction is something like 120 kilojoules per mole. Now it's kind of cool, we can also flip the water molecule around so that the positive side of the water is facing the sodium. <coughs> and so again, sodium is on the left, the water is on the right. And so this time, you know, the hydrogen ion side of the water molecule is positive. That corresponds to the blue. The red corresponds to the negative. And so what you see is that the sodium comes closer to the water molecule on this side. It gets higher energy. The stronger the repulsion, the less stable, the higher the energy. And so the sodium is going to be surrounded by the oxygen side of the water molecule. When a gas phase sodium ion enters water, it becomes surrounded by water molecules or hydrated. The ion-water connection results from ion-dipole forces indicated by a dotted line. It is difficult to determine the number of water molecules around a hydrated ion, but six is a good estimate for most cations. And so whenever you have an ion in water, it's going to be surrounded by water molecules, and you're going to have an ion-dipole interaction. Now, because you have electrostatic attraction here, the ion in water is more stable than the ion in the gas phase. And so that leads to what we refer to as the hydration enthalpy. And so the hydration enthalpy is a measure of all the ion-dipole interactions that an ion experiences in water. Hydration, hydration enthalpies are negative. Hydration enthalpies 
the absolute value are larger, the stronger the interaction between the ion and the stronger the ion dipole interaction. Now we saw that the sodium interaction interaction between one sodium ion and one water molecule was about minus 120 kilojoules per mole. If you look at the hydration enthalpy, it's minus 444. And so in water, the waters are coming and going off the sodium. And so on average, you have probably something like six water molecules. But because you have constant motion of the water, they're coming and going, um, waters are sharing the sodium, it's not going to be six times the 120, but it's going to be something like minus 144. Now, the bigger the charge on the ion, the absolute value charge of the ion, the more negative the hydration enthalpy, the stronger the ion dipole interaction. And so here we have a magnesium plus two, and so its hydration enthalpy is minus 2,003 kilojoules per mole. Again, bigger the charge, absolute value. So if you had a minus two, it'd also be pretty large. The, lar the more negative the hydration enthalpy, the larger the ion dipole interaction. Now the smaller the ion, the closer the ion can get to the water, the stronger the interaction, the more negative the hydration enthalpy. But treat a minus one the same as you do a plus one, a minus two the same as you do a plus two. What matters is the absolute value of the charge. The larger the absolute value of the charge, the stronger the interaction. And so the hydration enthalpy is the change enthalpy when gaseous ions are dissolved in water. And again, for a gaseous ion, for gases, we assume intermolecular forces are negligible. So no intermolecular forces there, less stable. An aqueous ion is dissolved in water. And so you have strong ion dipole interactions, and so that's going to be more stable. And so if I wrote down the reaction to represent the hydration enthalpy, we would represent the ion in the gas phase going to aqueous phase. And so this is more stable than that, and so that gives you negative hydration enthalpies. And again, um, the larger absolute value of the charge, the stronger electrostatic attraction between the ion and the water molecule, the more negative the hydration enthalpy. The smaller the ions, the closer the ions can get to the water molecule, the stronger electrostatic attraction between the ions and the water molecule, the more negative the hydration enthalpy. And the charges are the most important thing. And so if you're asked, you know, put the following in order of decreasing enthalpy of hydration. And so enthalpy of hydration, hydration and enthalpy, I'll use those two ter terms interchangeably. First, we do it in terms of charge. And so the absolute value of the charge. And so that plus three is the biggest charge. Then you have a plus twos, and then you have the plus ones. And once we put it in order of charge, then we do it in terms of size. And so between the calcium and magnesium, um, magnesium is smaller, and so it's going to have more negative hydration enthalpy. Between the lithium and the chloride ion, the lithium ion is smaller, and it's going to have a more negative hydration enthalpy. And again, the more negative hydration enthalpy means it's the stronger the ion dipole interaction. So we can look at a table of hydration enthalpies. And so that plus three is the most negative, um, then the plus twos, and then in general, the plus ones. And so first you look at the charge and then you look at the size. And the stronger the interaction leads to a more negative hydration enthalpy. Now the other one we want to talk about is the ion-ion interaction, and so that's the interaction between opposite charged ions. The bigger the charge is, stronger attraction. The smaller the ion, the stronger the attraction. And again, this is why ionic solids form. Now if you have two ions interacting together, opposite charges, you're going to have a strength of interaction of something on the order of 250 kilojoules per mole. Now the last enthalpy is looking at all the ion-ion interactions, and so it's going to be much bigger. And so like we looked at, looked at the ion-dipole interaction, that was one ion and a polar molecule. That gave us something on order of 120 kilojoules per mole, and then we looked at the hydration enthalpy, which was an ion and a lot of water molecules that was bigger. And so we, here we have the same type of thing. We have the ion-ion interaction, and then we have the lattice enthalpy. And so the larger the absolute charges, the stronger electrostatic attraction, the larger last enthalpy, the higher the melting point, the smaller the ions, the closer ions, the stronger electrostatic attraction. Just like in terms of the ion dipole interaction, the charges are the most important thing. So a question you could be asked is put the following in order of increasing melting point. And so first we want to do it in terms of charges. 
And so we see magnesium oxide is a plus two minus two, sodium oxide is plus one minus two, uh, lithium fluoride plus one minus one, sodium chloride plus one minus one. And so we would expect that magnesium oxide should have the highest melting point because it's got the biggest charges. And then sodium oxide should have the second highest because plus one minus two. Now, sodium chloride and lithium fluoride are both plus one minus ones. And so looking at the periodic table, we see that lithium is above the sodium, so it should be smaller. The fluorine is above the chlorine, so it should be smaller. And so lithium fluoride should have a higher melting point than sodium chloride. And so we can look at the actual numbers and you know what we predicted it comes out to be true. And so for both the ion-ion and ion dipole interactions, the larger the absolute charge is the most important consideration. The bigger the charge is, the stronger electrostatic attraction, the more stable. The smaller the ions, the closer the ions, the stronger electrostatic attraction, the more stable. The stronger the ion-ion interaction, the higher the melting point, the larger the last enthalpy. And again, ion-ion interaction, we're thinking about ionic solids. The stronger the ion dipole interaction, the more negative the hydration enthalpy. And again, ion dipole interaction is important when you dissolve ions in water. I hope that was helpful.